Them all, please. Thank you. Um, I wanted to ask two questions. Um, one is regarding finance. Uh, we've talked a lot about uh, sort of having policy independence um, and mobilizing, uh, mobilizing resources from within. To that extent, I think um, examples that we could cite from the Rwandan, for example, the Agachiro Fund and um, the Great Renaissance Dam, I don't know if it's a fund, but we're raising money for it together. On the other hand, both countries have also um, very recently um, debuted on the um, sovereign debt markets. And to some, to some degree, if you're, I mean, it's, I, I understand that you would have to be able to not pay the money that you, uh, to pay the money back. But doesn't that cut on the, on, sorry, I'm not articulating myself very well, but doesn't that kind, to some degree, lessen your policy independence? Um, and what was the rationale? At, at, at why this time? Um, I address this question to both um, President Kagame and, and Prime Minister Haile Mariam. What was the rationale behind jo jo joining the, the international bond markets? The other question I have, um, it's something I'd like to pick up from uh, what the gentleman from EGAD said. Um, I think it's something of, uh, about around Medlis' thinking of the developmental state that hasn't really been mentioned, which I think he was trying to mention. He, I think, asserts that development is not capital, a, a process of capital accumulation, but a process of accumulating technological capabilities. To, to what degree is that conceptualization of development um, visible within our, in, our, in the way we craft policy um, in Ethiopia? And to what extent has that played a role in, in, in policy making in general, or is that something that's taught, thought about at all? Because we've talked about a lot of different, a lot of other aspects, but I think it was an assertion of his that to, in order to become a middle-income country, we need to be able to copy technology, and in order to become a high-income country, we need to be able to innovate, and that's something that I didn't um, hear being discussed. So I was just wondering if and that's open to all of. All of your excellencies. Thank you very much. Thank you, Samal. I think, um, as far as the foreign debt is concerned, um, uh, we are we have been getting um, and borrowing money from. Uh, not only the international capital market, but uh, bilateral uh, you know, organizations and countries like China, India. And we have been using this money for our uh, you know, infrastructure development, which is much more needed uh, to you know, see that the infrastructure deficit is accommodated. The thing is, there is no difference whether you get um, you know, debt from China or from the capital market, wherever. The thing is, you have to understand that your debt sustainability ratio is in such a way that it is low risk. And if you go beyond that low risk, you are susceptible. Uh, that's where you know, the policy rent comes. So we have to be very careful in looking into that whether you are able to pay back the loan in such a way that you, you will not be you know, susceptible to the pressure that's coming because you have failed to pay this debt. Uh, that's the most important issue. And we have checked this correctly. And I think and it, the, the history shows that many developing countries use foreign savings uh, to pursue their uh, you know, development in uh, uh, helping them for uh, using the, the, you know, the money that they borrow for infrastructure deficit completion. And we do also this from World Bank, uh, you know, ADB, and from other concessional loans. But when it comes to commercial loans, I think careful scrutiny is necessary, as you said, not to compromise your policies, uh, you know, uh, around this area. Um, when it comes to technology accumulation, you are right. I think the most important stage that you need to have uh, technology accumulation at the first stage you have to have uh, you know, technology implementation and use capacity. 
rather than technology innovation, as you say. So we have to build how to use already existing technology globally. And through that course, you start to learn and try to modify uh, the technology to suit your own conditions. And as you know, uh, we have already assigned uh, uh, the Metal and Engineering Corporation for uh, this technology transfer and technology adaptation. Again, technology uh, usage and go beyond uh, modifications. And if possible, there are you know, technology innovation as well. So I think it's a ladder uh, that you have to follow in, in doing so. Uh, I, we are in the right track uh, doing this uh, process and uh, helping you know, uh, the technological uh, uh, capability accumulation. Thank you. President? Yes. I'll be very brief. Uh, the Prime Minister has almost said everything. I want to add uh, uh, our dipping on uh, bond markets um, is, uh, in fact, compatible with our intention of uh, uh, wanting to be independent. Uh, and, and here I, I want to assert that. Uh, uh, markets provide more of this independence than y if you went for money elsewhere. So y y it's an issue of the markets and how these markets uh, serve you. And, and as the Prime Minister said, you, you, you go to the markets, the capital markets, knowing your limitations, and therefore you have to operate within those limitations. But that, in as far as that is taken care of, then uh, there is uh, the, the kind of independence that uh, we, we are able to attain other than other sources that may be highly politicized.